Um, the concept of church, the gathering of believers, is not a new thing. It is not. It did not happen when Jesus Christ came. Yes, it became the church, but it has been from the beginning. I remember in the book of Exodus chapter 33, God told Moses, Moses, I need you to take the tabernacle. That's what they call it then, tabernacle. I need you to take the tabernacle from the camp of the children of Israelites and move it out. So that those that want to worship me we get up and come out to worship me. Because a lot of people were worshiping God out of comfort. A lot of people were worshiping God because it's just there. But for them to get up out of the camp, to come to this tabernacle to make a sacrifice indicates that you really do want to worship God. You know, we are in a generation where you can't tell anybody, do it just because the Bible says. I know when I was growing up, when we asked some questions that either our leader or pastor can't answer it, you tell us, just because the Bible says, do it. And a lot of you can bear witness, your parent will tell you, just because I say so. Whether you like it or not, the, the, I don't need to explain myself to you. Has anybody heard that? I don't need to explain myself to you. But I thank God for a God that we serve. God, and I keep on telling you people, God has never told us to do something without giving us at least the benefit of it. If he tell you to do something, he will tell you why you wanted to do it. And throughout the scriptures, God gave reason why you need to come to church. A lot of people think coming to church is to worship God. Please don't. It, that, is, that is the secondary reason. It is really not the primary reason why God wants people to come to church. Because in the book of John chapter 4, Jesus Christ made that clear to the woman by the well. He told the woman by the well, because the woman by the well was trying to tell Jesus where to worship. Oh, somebody didn't get it. She was trying to tell Jesus that, listen, our fathers told us we worship on this mountain, but y'all told us we need to go to Jerusalem. He was trying to tell Jesus how to worship. And Jesus had to tell him that, listen, your father and your father's fathers, and the father, 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 they were wrong. All y'all are wrong. And the other side too, they are wrong. To tell you that it's only in Jerusalem you have to worship. Because my father <laughs> is spirits. And those that will worship my father... We have to come to the realization you have to worship him in spirit and in truth. So this negates a building or a, a place that you call church. But God still wants you to come to church. Watch this. And there's a reason why God want you to come to church and be, there's so many reasons there's so many reasons why God said church but today I'm going to just start with one I'm going to start with one and I'm going to start from the book of Psalm 73 Psalm 73 because devil have used the pandemic the, 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 the COVID pandemic as an illusion for people not to come to church no more. People have got so comfortable and they, sat, they sit down before their TV and say, at least I'm watching somebody on TV. But I mean, it is good. But God have better for you. Uh, 
And devil have used people, have used that event or that occurrence to deviate people from coming to church. Listen, I personally believe you need to be in church more than you don't be in church. What do I mean? You need, I believe you need to come to church more than you don't. If we have service four times in a month, you're supposed to come to church three times, at least three times. Not 50-50. This is biblical. Not 50-50. It has to be more than you don't come. I don't believe, I personally don't believe, my wife will tell you, I don't believe that you have to be in every service. This is just my own belief. But I believe you have to be more than, listen, when you walk in a place, at some point, if you keep on coming, they'll tell you, no, you need to take a vacation. Because vacation will allow you to renew yourself to do better. Oh, somebody, I'm missing my audience. But Psalm 73, I want to go back to Psalm 73. Psalm 73, God used this to bring me out from a very, very deep place 16 years ago. Psalm 73 was written by a man called Asaph. Asaph was a musician and a singer during the, day, during the king, kingship of King Solomon and King David. He served both of them in the church. Uh, some scholar says he was a music leader and he probably was one of the chief musicians back then. Psalm, Psalm, um, Asaph wrote Psalm 73 to Psalm 82. And if you look at some of his writings, he was writing to chief musicians. He was encouraging chief musicians. So he had to be a chief musician to encourage chief musicians. He served. He served was a church goer. His family was born into music. So from the beginning of his life, all what he knew was to worship God. He, he, the, some of his psalmic, some of his psalms were, 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 were he, he spoke about Jesus. So he spoke about, so some of his psalms were messianic psalms. He spoke about Jesus. He prophesied in some of his psalms. So Ephraim was not only a musician, Ephraim was a preacher. He was a prophet. He, 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 he was an encourager. He was a man that led in the church. I say all this to let you know, Esav was not just a, new, a newborn again Christian or a new believer. He was seasoned. He was, he was a seasoned believer. He was a man that loved God. He was a man that when he talks about God, you say, I know he felt, yeah, this guy had the heart of God. Listen, he was raised, like I said, from childhood to be in the church. He was raised, he was raised to preach. He was raised to minister. He, he, he has every quality. A preacher. A minister, a leader a, in the community, in the, in, the, in, the, in the church, in anywhere you want to put him, he had all those quality. Even with all I've said about him, he found himself in a low spot. He found himself in a low spot. He started Psalm 73 by saying, truly, <laughs> the word truly, the word truth is of a truth. He, he said, truly, God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. If I said, 
I'm not going to argue this with anybody. The truth is this. God is good to Israel. Remember, it didn't start by God is good to me. He said, truly, God is good to Israel. He's also good to those that have a clean heart. Effort was in a bottom place, but he still knows that God is good. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, you know, when people tell him God is good, he will tell you all the time. Have you, you know, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. He, 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 he was in a place and he observed, but this is the problem right here. He was observing that God is good to people, but it looks like the goodness of God is far away from him. He was in a place of, of, of yes, I agree with you. He is a good God, but I can't feel it personally right now. You know, his parents, just like David in the book of Psalm 22, his parents taught him that God is good. He said, I agree that God is good, but his goodness, is, it looks like his goodness is trying to catch up with me. He, he, he was saying that the goodness of God upon Israel is something that you cannot cover. But I still can't feel it. I don't know anybody that feels that. that you, can. you hear people's testimony. But you say, when is my testimony going to happen? You hear people say, God is a healer, but you are still sick. You hear people say, God is a provider, but it looks like you are struggling. Ah, you hear people say, God is a way maker, but every time you look up, it looks like there is no pavement for you. You hear people say things, you, you, you can see that God is good, but his goodness cannot still. Whew. Mm. He says, without no doubt, God is good to Israel and those that have a clean heart. But watch verse 2. Verse 2, he changed his tone. He said, but as for me, my feet was almost gone. My steps as well, as well I slept. God is good to Israel, everyone with Everyone around him, God is good. God is good. Their heart is good. But his own mind, he almost lost his mind. He can confirm that God is good, but he has almost lost his mind. He almost lost his ways. He he almost lost his joy. He almost lost his purpose. He almost lost his salvation. He almost lost himself. Even though God is good to everybody. But he almost lost himself. He almost missed seeing the goodness of God in his own eyes, in his own life. You know, he was coming from a position of vulnerability and openness. He was in a state. Or he was getting to a state where we call depression. Because he can he see God is good. But it looks like God is good from afar to him. And he says something in verse 3. He says, For I was envious of the foolish. When I saw this prosperity of the wicked, for there was no bounds in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither they were plagued like other men. Therefore, pride compassed them about as a chain. Violence covered them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They had more than art could wish. They are corrupt. They speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lustfully. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongues walking through the earth. Therefore, his people return hither. The waters of, the full, the water of a full cup has sprung out to them. And they say, how does God know? And is their knowledge in the most high? Behold, there are ungodly who prosper in, they are the ungodly who prosper in the world. 
they increase in riches. Watch this. Watch this. For 10 verses. Listen. He says, I was envious. That is why I didn't think God was good to me. Envy is a sin. But when I read the 10 verses that followed, I understood what Asaph was going through. I was able to sympathize for him. Because, listen, he said, I was envious of on the ungodly. I was envious that I am doing right. But those that are not doing right, it looks like they're getting everything. I'm still struggling. <laughs> I don't know if I'm talking to anybody that feel like this. That feel like this. They, they told me to clap. I clapped. They told me to shout. I shouted. They told me to sing. I sing. They told me to pray. I prayed. They told me to fast. I fasted. They told me to sow my tithes. I gave my tithes. They told me to do everything. But every time I look around me, there are people that are not doing it. They look like they are doing better than I am. His effort was in a position that he said, ah, why is it that they are doing better than I am? I never smoke in my life or never drank in my life. But doctors saying that I have cancer. But I there's my neighbor that does not believe in God, that smokes every day, that drink every day, but still have a clean bill held. God! Why is it this happening to me? I show up to work. I do what they tell me to do. I, 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 I am... I'm dedicated. I do everything. But it seems like they promoted somebody that is too lazy. That everyone knows is lazy. But God, I am still in the same position. God! Why is the wicked prospering? I, I was told that if I believe in you, God, that everything will be easy for me. That was told, if I believe in you, God, that my money is not going to be funny. I was told, God, if I believe in you, God, that my health will be well. I was told, if I believe in you, God, but, the every, but it seems like it's not happening. That's where I thought is. He was in that position. He looks around him. The people that are not doing well. Getting everything. I did not lie in my taxes. I'm not lying with my income. But I cannot get any assistance from nobody. But people that have 10 jobs still getting assistance. Oh, come and help me, Lord. He first was in the position and he looked around him. And he says, God, 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 what is going on? What is going on? Why is it that it is tougher for me that I believed in you? Uh, they were told me, they, they told me it's going to be easy, but I've not seen the easy part of it. God, why is it that I have to wake up to my bills and go to bed thinking about my bills? Why is it that I, I, I cannot, every time it looks like I take two steps forward, I take five steps backward. Why is it that every time it looks like there's a door opening, it ends up slamming in my face. Why is it that this person, God, I know this person, this person don't even like you. This person don't, he cuss in your face. This person don't believe you. This person cannot do something. He cannot to save his life, he can't even live right. But every time you look on Facebook, they're posting their next car. They're posting their next vacation. They're posting their... their I said, God. As, does anybody relate with effort right here? I just, I, I'm trying to feel who I'm talking to. Do anybody relate with effort right here? Now, do we understand why he was jealous? I said, even though jealousy is a sin, I understand that. I understand. I understand his pain. I understand that how, how this can, can put you in a position. They told me, all we need to just do right. 
I went to school, got my degree. I'm not, I'm not lying in my resume. But every time they tell you, you overqualify. What? My goodness. Ephraim found himself in a position. Then he says something that most of us probably just say in our hearts. He said, Verily I have cleaned my heart in vain. I'm reading from verse 13. Verily I have cleaned my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. He said, Maybe I'm serving God. I'm serving the wrong God. Maybe I'm doing something I'm not supposed to be doing. Maybe, maybe I'm wasting my time. Verse 14 says, For all the day long I have been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say I will speak thus before, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy people. When I thought to know this, it was so painful to me. If I says, listen, I'm feeling this way. I can't even share with somebody. Because if I share with somebody, they said, they, they're going to tell me I don't have enough faith. If I share with somebody, they will tell me that you don't know how to count your blessing. I mean, have you been in the position that you can't really tell how you feel to people? People, the people, your own brothers, your own sisters, the people, they will judge you and be like, well, child, you just need more faith. Really? The Bible says I don't need more faith. God says I just need a little faith. Why is it that they're putting more faith on me? Ah, uh, you know, he said, he said, I'm not even trying to complain. I just need somebody that can understand what I'm going through. He said, but because I cannot share it, I go to bed crying. And I wake up crying, but I still come out looking like I'm doing okay. But inside of me, I am boiling. It's about to burst. I am boiling. I'm about to give up. I am boiling. My legs are slippery. It looks like I'm going to fall. I am boiling. In fact, listen, I told you, this is a seasoned Christian. He is a preacher. This is not a new born again it's not, it's just, it's not new. It's not new in the work of God. He has been doing it since when he was little. He has seen the highs and he has seen the lows, but he was still in this position. Oh, help me, Lord. Hmm. He was in the position. I don't know who to cry to because they would tell me, have more faith. I don't need you to say anything when I talk to you. Oh, well, you just, I want you to just acknowledge me. I just want you to acknowledge me. I don't need your advice. I don't need you to quote scripture to me because I know the scripture. I know, I know that God is always good, but it doesn't look good right now. Oh, what I need you to do is just hear me out. Hmm. That's what he thought was. He said, listen, I've preached it before. I know God. Is. That's why he started with truly God is good. And that's why he said, truly God is good. And that's how he started it. I don't need you to argue with me. I know what you're about to say. Because I've said it to somebody else before. I know where you're going to say it. I just need you to, I, let, let's lay the foundation right now. God is good. We all know it. But I am going through pain right now. I've done everything they told me to do. I've done everything they told me to do. Mother, I've done everything they told me to do. I come up here to the pulpit and I play the keyboard. I play the music and I sing, I shout like everyone. I've done everything to do them to do. But I cannot stop seeing people doing better than I am. And they don't even believe in my God. But something happened in verse 17. Whew. Something happened in verse 17. He said, until. Whew. Mm. Mm. He said, until I went into the sanctuary of God. Woo! 
is there until I get to the house of God. Listen, Hephat was in the edge of leaving the church. Hephat was in the edge of just throwing up the tower and saying, no, I'm done. What my fathers and my mother taught me, they, it's good, but it lo- doesn't look like it's good to me. What I've seen people, people say is good, but it doesn't look like it's good to me. This is not for me. But he said, but I made a mistake and I stumbled into the church. I stumbled into the house of the Lord. And he said, until I went into the house of the Lord, then I understood their hand. Ah. Hephat from verse 3 to verse 16. He was looking at things from the flesh. His flesh was ruling over him. His emotion was ruling over him. Listen, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Your flesh is not that wrong, not that bad. Or your emotion, God gave it to you for you to check on yourself and to balance yourself. Listen to this. Listen to this. Don't, I don't believe, listen, God gave you the flesh and the emotion. If God did not give it to you and you pray yourself, I will say you are wrong. But it was God that gave you the flesh. It was God that gave you the emotion. But God did not want them to rule over you. Hephat was being controlled. He was being controlled by what he sees. By what he heard. By what he felt. By, and he was doing it, but when he got to the house of God, listen, the, thank God that God did not tell us if it was a message, if it was a singing, if it was, but this is what I felt. Just like David said, I was glad when they say, let us go into the house of the Lord. I felt like when effort, even though he was carrying the burden of the, of, of the word on his back, but immediately he stepped into the house of the Lord. He felt relief. He said, the Bible says that burden was lifted. That's why the Bible says burdens are lifted at Calvary. And the Calvary is where the church is. Calvary is where believer is. Calvary is where the saints gather. Calvary is where the saints sing praises to God. The Bible says immediately that Esau walked into Calvary. Woo! Those bodies were lifted. He said, now I know their hand. Watch this. He says, now watch it. He said, surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou casted them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation? As in a moment, they are utterly consumed with terror. He said, God, I can see it clearly right now. That everything they think they are achieving is just an illusion. I am the one standing on the solid ground. They are the ones standing on the slippery ground. Remember, he says, I'm almost slipped. But now he understands that because I, my foundation is on God, that can never be moved. Because my foundation is the one that created heaven and earth that can never be shaken. Because I believe the God that heaven and earth may pass away, but beyond every, everything he said will come to pass. I stand on the solid ground. I stand on the, purpo- on the, on the purpose. He starts saying things eternally. Than seeing things temporarily. And he got that perspective just by walking to the house of God. Efforts start to see God. I said, God, now I understand. Now I'm a fool. I was singing like a fool. I almost lost it like a fool because I was in my emotion, I was seeing things physically. Listen, this now takes us back to second Peter we read. Take us back to, to the second the second Peter we read. Let's go to second Peter. Second Peter we, just, we read. 
it took us back to Second Peter. It says, for a day. <laughs> I love that. I love that. It says, for a day is like a thousand years before God. A day. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8. It says, but Jesus Christ, the, but, 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 it's, but Peter started this. He says, but beloved. He's telling you that, listen, wherever you are going through, notice God still loves you. It could be painful right now. Last week I was telling you, David said, I mean last two weeks I was telling you, David said, even though I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death, David said, I will fear no evil. And he said, I will fear no evil for one reason, because I know that you are with me. He said, because I know you still love me. I know you still care for me. I know that you have the best thoughts for me. And he says, that's why Prabhupada is saying that, but beloved, listen, when you, would, one of the things that happens to us is this, when we're going through, we forget that God loves us. I shared with us two weeks ago, I said, listen, God never beats you down when you are down. God don't beat you when you are down. He does not try to hurt you. He's not trying to break you. Listen, you are not a horse. God is not trying to break you. He called you a sheep. That's what he called you. He called you a sheep. You, I told you this. I told you this. You will never see somebody said, I want to put a burden on a sheep for a journey. God does not put burden on you. Please, not this. He said, lay down your body. He didn't say, pick up your body. A lot of us, we lay down our body before Christ. And we say, keep on looking at it. I say, God, I've put down my body. And God said, okay, thank you. And we keep on looking at it. God, the body is still there. Okay, thank you. And he said, God, the body is still there. What are you going to do with it? I just told you to lay it down. Okay, God, I'm going to wait a little bit. Well, God, since you're not going to do nothing, I'm going to pick up my body. A lot of people pick up their body. Prapira says, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Watch this. Everything God said to you, God said, I will do it. Every single thing I've said to you, God says, I will do it. Let me, let me, let me share something with you. I like the fact that there are some things that God has not done for me. Do you know why? Because I will not die until God does it for me. Or somebody didn't catch it. That is the assurance that I'm going to be alive. Because God will fulfill every single thing that he said that he will do. His assurance is... Because he has not done it means that there's no death coming your way. Ah, somebody didn't catch it. I want somebody to catch this. Because he hasn't done it yet. Because he is not a man that should lie. They, Peter said, this is the assurance I have that every single thing that God promises, he said, I will do it. He said, it's not slack. It's not slack. It's not, it's not, it's not, he, 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 we don't serve a God that forgets. Glory be to God. Our God never sleep and he never slumber. He is a promise keeping God. Now let me tell you my story and I'm done. I told you this happened to me 16 years ago. 16 years ago, I graduated from college. High honors. Watch this. I don't think I would tell my wife this story. High honors. 
high honors, decorated students, graduated. I have no job. Woof. I'm looking for job and 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 nobody is hiring me. Devil told me it's because I'm black. But I remember in my classmates, there were black students that were having good jobs. So it can't be because I'm black. <laughs> and I'm not a dummy because I'm smart. I have no job. My friends calling them, oh yeah, I just got this job. And they pay me sixty thousand fifty. I'm like, what? Seventeen years ago, fifty sixty thousand is a lot of money. Not like right now, but you know, seventeen years ago, it's a lot of money for a college student. <laughs> Back then, a college student graduates is getting like thirty thousand. But these guys are making sense. I'm like, what is wrong with y'all? What's going on with me? I had to move back home because I had no job. I am 25, 26. Oh my God, no, 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 no. This is not my plan. This is not my plan, God. This is not my plan. This is not my plan. I had this planned out, God. I had this planned out. By 26, 27, 28, I just want to get married. I, I got all this. I have a plan, God. 16 years ago, and what's come to us, these people don't know God. And they're doing so well. Mm. It got so painful. It got so painful one day. I went to my dad. I said, Dad, did you put a curse on me? And Listen, and I have the most loving father in the world. And I said, Dad, what did you do to me? What did your family do to me? You put a curse on me, Daddy? My dad cried. Because he understood my pain. He was speaking with his son, I didn't do nothing to you. I don't know what is going on either, son. But I'm like, daddy, 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 daddy. And I said, I decided to, I said, you know what? If I can get a job in what my field, I'm going to go to the grocery store and get a job. I went to Food for Less and I applied for a job. And they told me that I'm overqualified. I'm like, I, I just want something. I just need something. Oh my goodness, it was good. He was so painful. It was so painful. I said, God, why is this? God, I, no, I don't understand what you are trying to do to me. God, I, if this is a practical joke, I'm not laughing, God. This is not funny to me. It might be funny to you, but God, it ain't funny to me. I cried. My dad cried with me. How can you graduate with honors? People are supposed to be calling me. People, I went to a prominent school for goodness sake. People are supposed to be calling me. Hmm. And I remember that day. God told me to go to Psalm 73. He said, son, you're not the only one that has been in this position. But what I said, I would do. Say, God, this is what God now told me. He said, When you go to church, dress like the job you want. <laughs> I said, I said, What? I said, When you go to church, because I, my wife, knows that I'm the most comfortable person you can ever meet. I like comfort things. It might not look good. That's your problem. You don't have to look at me. I'm not trying to show off to nobody. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, rich folks like me, yeah, rich people don't worry about what people wear, what they wear. Only poor people worry about what they wear. Oh, oh only poor people worry about what they wear. That's why they wear all this stuff to, to get attention and they, to know they're lonely. No, rich folks like me. I said, yes, I'm rich. I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. Rich folks like me, don't worry about what I wear. You, because I'm rich. 
That's your problem. Deal with it. God told me, start dressing like the job you want. And my dad came back and said, son, when you come to church, I want you to dress better. Stop wearing jeans and tennis shoes and just walk into the sanctuary and sit down and play keyboard and just, no. And I started dressing. And I, and I started going to men's warehouse to go buy me some nice some suits. And after a year, they called me. Wow. They of us called me. And then they say, oh, yeah, we saw your resume. I'm like, yeah, my resume will be on life forever. <laughs> we want to hire you. They hired me. From then, I moved to another company that liked to wear suits, I mean, tie and crown. And then go move me up. And in five years, what I've lost for 17 years, God restored it back. God is not slack concerning his promises. Uh, listen, I'm here to encourage somebody that, been, that is or have been in this situation. That you look around you and you say, I don't get it. I give my tithes. But God, it looks like everything is still tight on me. I pray, but it looks like my prayer are not going through. They told me that if I can just serve you, I'm not going to be sick. But this sickness is ravaging my body. God is not slack concerning his promise. What he says he will do, he will do it. He, he is God just because of what he says. There is no mountain that he cannot move. And there's no valley that you might be in that he cannot bring you out. He is God and God by himself. It might look like it's tough right now, but nothing can compare to the glory 